India just uh, announced a big nuclear missile test and they made absolutely clear that it was a, a missile that could reach uh, China, it could reach Shanghai and Beijing, uh, and its purpose was deterrence. Do you think that we are big, we're witnessing the beginnings of a kind of Asian uh, arms um, race? I think, I think we're already in the Asian arms race. I mean, India could have chosen to conduct this Agni-5 missile test at, um, at any stage in the last two, three years. Um, the, timing, the timing of this is, um, is quite interesting, though, given, um, uh, given the fact that, you know, China it does have uh, a more assertive role in the last two years, but China's also in a, in a transition phase. And I think um, you have a weak government in India, and this is one way of showing that it's still, um, it's still got strength, can flex its muscles, and of course, the Agni is the god of fire. It can reach Shanghai. Uh, for the first time, India is at a parity therefore, um, in nuclear terms with China. And I suspect we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. I do suspect, though, as it has always been the case with an Indian test, whether it's a nuclear or a missile test, we're going to see a Pakistan, some Pakistan version, sometime in the very near future. Um, well, what I find interesting about the test isn't so much what it says about India, it's what it says about China and the, really, I think, the failure of Chinese foreign policy over the past decade. I mean, now just in the last year, you've had Burma turn very sharply away from its Chinese patron towards uh, the West. Um, the Vietnamese uh, next week will be conducting naval exercises with the United, uh, with the United States. Japan, um, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, the entire Australia. rim, yeah. Australia, where we're going to be deploying uh, uh, Marines, the entire Asian rim has decided that their fate isn't, uh, or their future isn't better married to an ascendant China. It's containing the rise of, course, of a very aggressive and somewhat scary state. And of course, all of these countries hold, well, most of these countries hold regular naval exercises and war games with India as well. India's relations with those around China's rim. And, and they certainly um, do all with the United States. They all they want the insurance policy of the U.S. Navy. I, I don't disagree with you about the, about China's failure, the failure of China's policy, but I don't think this was exactly a brilliant move for India's foreign policy. India does this right when we're in the midst of once again uh, having talks with the Iranians where they've been extremely unhelpful with respect to sanctions on the Iranians, and where we've got a real problem with North Korea again, and North Korea has just launched a rocket that, uh, that, that fails. So just at this moment, India really needs to test a... a I actually think, think I mean, it's a in, India is not Britain. That's the thing. And it <laughs> keeps wanting to demonstrate that. What that does it that can, mean? That it's not going to be a global lieutenant of, of the United <laughs> States. So the, there is no treaty there. And I, I mean, I understand your frustration. The timing <laughs> is not helpful from an American point of view. Your but, point being um, that, that we are, we are clearly we're, we're winking uh, at the Indian nuclear program while... Or just that it makes it so much harder to talk to the Iranians or the North Koreans but, when they're pointing to another a country that is in fact a nuclear power that first didn't sign the nuclear treaty but that nevertheless is saying we can do it just as it's got other countries around that want to say we too are on the but it's stage. actually a, a moment of, of clarity I don't think anyone is going to go to sleep tonight uh, lying awake thinking oh my goodness the Indians now have a new missile that can reach uh, China why because India is basically a responsible and a very democratic power um, that's the real issue here. We talk about our problems with Iran and North Korea as essentially legal problems that are potentially in breach of NPT. Our problems with these regimes is that they're awful regimes with barbarous intentions. And I, it, might, it might help clear up some thinking about the nature of proliferation when we say, you know, we don't really mind when India um, acquires this kind of capability. What we fear is uh, an Iran or a North Korea doing it. So, Brett, but wait a minute. Why exactly <laughs> is this wonderful, uh, responsible power not willing to impose sanctions on Iran when everybody else is actually giving Iran a major out? I mean, if they're so well, great and they're so noble, the and the, you know, the Iranians, the absolutely. Well, well, they, 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 they don't want to be Britain, but they do like to be France. That is to say, there's a sort of Gaulist of I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you like can make a change. Thank you. You could make the case also. Let's hear from the Gaulist. <laughs> you could make the case that uh, that actually this missile was not aimed at China as much as, as, as the United States do in terms of you know trying to, to 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 say that they are power. And when you look, I'm following the UN here in New York, uh, among other things. And when you look at uh, what uh, the India is doing in the Security Council, they've been in the Security Council for one year, and they align themselves with China, not with the U.S.
the ambassador, the Indian ambassador uh, at the Security Council on Syria, is actually uh, the most uh, uh, defendant of, of uh, the most pro Syrian, yeah, pro -Syrian right. ambassador Syrian. among the, the 15. Yeah. Even, I mean, even, uh, you know, even the, the Russian ambassador is not <laughs> sometimes. So, 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 so is, yes, they are, they are on, uh, maybe, uh, you know, they're not going to use their nuclear bomb against, against the U.S. But, but they're not aligning, they're not aligning themselves. It's with an extraordinary the US. measure of how much the U.S. wants India's friendship, that it, ba that it now backs India's permanent membership of the U.N. Security yeah. Council, even though it has a voting record against U.S. resolutions, bar none, I think. I, mean, I might be wrong, there's probably Cuba and a few others, but India is pretty high up The problem for Brett is all good things don't go together. You get a wonderful <laughs> exactly democracy, right. but its foreign no, policy well, is lawless, even, 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 even if they oppose us on, on the tactical, the, the values of the state are basically consonant with American ones, and we can live with our differences, our diplomatic ones, even so, if they're so, even So now are you sharp. grudgingly willing to say that, in fact, France's independence is a great thing? France's yes, independence yes. is a marvelous thing. I wish our, our separate prosperity. <laughs> on that on that note of Franco-American friendship, <laughs> Brett Stevens, Emmanuel San Martin, Ed Luce.